Speaker, I rise to uh, present my condolences to Her Majesty the Queen on the death of her liege man of life and limb, who was her husband, a father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and a remarkable man. He was talented in his own right, as we have heard and read so much in the last few days. Many things, actually, that I suspect many of us had no idea that he did. Uh, I try to paint, and I understand what it is to be described as adequate. Uh, but uh, I have to tell anybody who hasn't paint yet that they have something to discover, that even getting the right colours in the right place at the right time is, as far as I'm concerned, brilliant. Uh, but to discover that he had all these elements and all these talents and did so many things, not just innovative, designing his own machinery, uh, but just that intelligence, that drive, <coughs> and that leadership. From the armed forces, through hundreds of charities, so many thousands of public events, he added much distinction throughout. He did distinction to all that he did, even if it was telling business leaders to pull their fingers out but it was quite clear the UK needed business leaders that actually led and actually produced something that people wanted to buy. He was quick to spot that that was what was missing, not the people that were working in the businesses, but the people that were not leading them properly. And that was considered quite outrageous. But there was a huge the thing that struck me, Mr. Speaker, has been the huge fondness that is the outpourings of fondness that have come over the last few days. I, I didn't expect quite that level of fondness because I thought by now for many of new generations they would not recognize some of the things that he had done or even understood. But their, their fondness and their, ex their sense really of who he was is quite interesting and I think in a way Mr. Speaker I would like to reflect on the fact that I think in a way there was something else that he re represents. He represents the passing finally of the greatest generation. That generation that was prepared to sacrifice everything, everything, so that the rest of us could live in peace and prosperity. They didn't answer, ask any questions. And what defined them so much, and I think defined him in a way, was this sense of duty, an obliging sense of service, no matter what the request was or command, that they were uncomplaining, or as the Duke of Edinburgh would say, they never bellyached and they were always understated, never complained. My father's generation, you can hardly ever hear them say a word about what they went through. They just shrugged, never complained about their illnesses or their war wounds and just got on with life. Well, he was very much a representative of that remarkable, remarkable generation, as is, of course, Her Majesty the Queen. But the one area I wanted to remark on was that generation had this incredible sense of humor in the most difficult, and uh, appalling times. And I hope my uh, right honourable friend, the, uh, uh, the Secretary of State for Health, doesn't mind if I relate one particular story, uh, so typical of uh, His Royal Highness, was that we were in the receiving line for civil service awards, and I was standing but one or two away from, uh, from my uh, right honourable friend, uh, when the Duke of Edinburgh arrived. Now, how much the Queen went through very calmly and quietly and shook everyone's hands and uh, said a few words to them and moved on. He came through uh, just behind her and as he was getting to uh, my honourable friend, uh, asking people what they did, he asked him, what do you do? And he boldly announced, this is some years ago, that he had just been put in charge of uh, nuclear submarines. Uh, but, he said, smiling, I don't know anything at all about them, Your Royal Highness. Whereupon he guffawed immediately and said, how typical! Typical of politicians, in charge of something and not a single clue about it, he said. Roared with laughter and walked on. Everybody else completes and utter silence. He asked me what I did and I said, sir, nothing that important. Uh, and we moved on, <laughs> which had the merit of being true. Um, I have to say, uh, Mr. Speaker, he was straight and very funny. And that's a key element to this. We've, in this generation, I wonder what he thought about social media. Uh, where everybody complains or belly aches the whole time about everything, about each other, often rudely and arrogantly, something that he would have considered, I think, in that generation, would have considered appalling. Uh, if you have nothing to good to say about someone, then the old rule was, then don't say it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, this will fly over our heads here, I suspect, quite happily.
Can I therefore end, Mr. Speaker, by simply saying uh, that, um, uh, that the one thing, though, I think we must all remember is that here was a man with a glittering potential career who chose because of love to take a pace behind the woman he loved and serve her. And by serving her, he served his country with distinction. Nothing else needed to be said. His departure is a loss for us all. But in the fact that we have such a great monarch, the reality is, is because we had a great man beside her. And for that, Mr. Speaker, I give thanks. We're now going to our first virtual with Chris Grayling.